Everyone, I'm back with another film review, and this time it's M. Night Shyamalan's Glass. And we're going to do our usual thing. Uh, should you go see it? And whether you should see it in the cinema? Then we'll have a break, and I'll talk about the film, and then we'll have spoilers. And uh, I think this is going to be a relatively short film because I don't have as much to talk about. Uh, <laughs> I talk a lot more when a film is really, really bad or if it's really, really good. And unfortunately, this is somewhere just in the middle and not that great. And so I guess what I would say is if you uh, loved Unbreakable and Split, um, then you probably need to see this just to round off the trilogy. Um, there are some nice tips of the hat to people who are invested in these characters. But if you aren't, um, well, firstly, if you haven't seen Unbreakable and Split, don't go see this at all. Um, and if you're not super keen, I would just wait till it's on cable. It is definitely very drably shot. Um, there is no, it is more like, um, it is less cinematic value than most things on Netflix, for instance. Um, so what can I say? I'm always rooting for M. Night, but every time he gets almost back to the top of the heap, he shoots himself in the foot. Okay, I'll be back in a second. Well, I don't know really how much to say to people because if you're watching this review, I'm assuming that at worst you've seen the other films and at best you've seen this and it's quite pedestrian. So let's talk about M. Night Shyamalan. He made Unbreakable in 2000 and it was, I thought, uh, his best film. I like it a lot more than, let's say, The Sixth Sense, which is a lot more popular. And the reason I liked it was it investigated the mythos of being a superhero, but without all the capes and all the stuff I love, like in Avengers, for instance. Um, and it was a real slow burn, and it had a surprising twist which threw me. And normally I'm one of those guys, I can kind of pick the ending, I can pick the twist, I can pick the character, second act, uh, pivot. And I didn't with Unbreakable and I just loved it. And I watched it not long ago to show it to my son and he found it a bit slow. It is definitely a different type of era already, uh, even just 20 years ago. So then he, 2016, he did Split, mainly with James McAvoy um, and you know, did really, really well. He financed it himself, which is, not many people know this, he's putting all his own money in. Glass is totally his own money, even though it's distributed by Blumhouse. So he's gonna make a lot of money because I think it will open big uh, and then maybe word uh, of mouth will spread. So if you don't know, there's a scene in um, Glass in which M. Night Shyamalan is talking to the overseer's son um, and uh, Bruce Willis is in the scene he wants to go and it's the scene in which the guy goes let your dad go for a walk that's M. Night Shyamalan and it's the tip of the hat back to Unbreakable where he also has a cameo he likes doing that Hitchcock thing um, so let's look at the cast so the cast is Bruce Willis comes back as David Dunn uh, but now he's kind of called the overseer Kind of really didn't have a name in Unbreakable. He just would wear that kind of hoodie. Uh, and then you have Samuel L. Jackson as uh, Elijah Glass, Mr. Glass. Um, and you have James McAvoy uh, from Split. And he, uh, I don't know what you call it, the Horde. He's got like, I think, 24 characters. Uh, best known is probably Kevin, who's the real person. And then, um, and then, of course, The Beast. So, uh, added into the cast is Sarah Paulson, who plays a psychiatrist who comes along, and her specialty is treating people who are so deluded, mentally ill, that they think they're superheroes. Uh, what can we say? So, Bruce Willis <laughs> basically does nothing. He really is underacting. And um, there's some subtlety in Unbreakable where he is a very withdrawn kind of guy and it works for the film because when he does come out a little bit, you know, you can see the person underneath. J 
James McAvoy is doing the whole split thing, but this time you really did feel like you could see the gears grinding. Um, so it's kind of like almost like an acting masterclass, but I never believed this time that that was the guy that that is an organic kind of being. And whenever he did the beast, it was kind of a little bit embarrassing and kind of boring and yeah, didn't get it. Now the best actor in the whole thing is Samuel L. Jackson. And he's basically catatonic for most of the first half of the film. Um, and then when he comes up, he's got that charisma going. Sarah Paulson has this weird makeup. And if you know Sarah Paulson, she's in every uh, American horror story, for instance. She also does tons of other things. She's a great actress. But I don't know if they did this on purpose to give you um, an idea that, you know, look at this person and that she's... In, but the makeup is very strange and her acting is incredibly mannered. Um, and then finally you have, and I've got to check the name, Anna Taylor-Joy. And she comes back as uh, Casey from Split. And I didn't think that even made any sense at all. Um, she has about three minutes interaction with Kevin in Split. So, I don't know, it's all a bit crazy. Look, I don't, uh, the film is really boringly shot. I mean, really just bang, master shot, bang, bang, that's it, tell the story. I'm sure M. Knight was counting his uh, coins and going, look, I'm gonna make, a, for every dollar I save here, that's a dollar in my pocket. Um, look, I'll come back in spoilers and we'll wrap this up, bye. I don't know if you can hear, but my neighbor has just started I don't know, digging a pit or something. So I'm going to wrap this up really quick. So the spoilers, uh, M. Night Shyamalan is famous for having the best uh, surprise twist since Hitchcock. And, um, you know, Sixth Sense and Unbreakable, which I think is even better, uh, but also The Village and Happening and all, all these other films. They all have a twist. Uh, Split had a twist as well. And... Um, so the twist in this, if you're watching in spoilers, is that, uh, well, there's a couple twists. One is that you can't hold Mr. Glass down and he somehow manipulates the whole thing because he's a mastermind. And the other twist is that Sarah Paulson really represents this mythical kind of group of people who have this kind of like shamrock kind of thing tattooed on them. And their job is... Uh, not to take sides, but to get rid of all superheroes, good or bad, um, because otherwise humanity will be caught in the middle. And it's quite obvious from the beginning that Sarah Paulson has a different agenda. She looked like, uh, I almost, like a female Joker. Like, I thought maybe the twist is she's going to go crazy and she's got, she's a superhero, she's got her own agenda. And she did, but um, it was so lame, it didn't matter anyway. Um, the whole third act is shockingly bad. I mean, now we can talk openly. The plan by Mr. Glass is so crap that why you would even bother? It's the whole, like everyone dies. And the idea is that people will see these shit videos and therefore know that superheroes exist. It's so, so underwhelming that I don't even think the biggest fans of him or that trilogy would be um would feel good about that ending it is so unsatisfactory it really beggars belief for a film which really is just about the ideas and seeing what is going to happen because it's not flashily shot for him to work that out on paper and then that's what he came up with i think he must have just hit a wall and didn't know what to do it's really really bad and um uh, but the rest of the film is kind of okay. So all in all, I just thought it was kind of average. The other thing I want to talk about is he, he talks also about this, uh, you know, the, the comics are the modern version of mythology and that you can see all these things. And he talks about like limited editions as if they're a different type of a way in which you tell a comic story. Now, I'm not a big comic nerd, but even I know limited edition is just a printed way that you show something. It's got nothing to do with the format of a comic. It's 
it's like he doesn't even understand comics. And if you're going to be lecturing me about them, get Neil Gaiman in or someone who's really knowledgeable because that actually really pushed me out of the film. Uh, look, this is just a, a very malevolently average film. If you have no reason to see it, um, don't. And if you're watching this, you probably either have seen it or you are going to see it and just wanted to know what, even my voice is protesting now at this. Um, you just want to know how it all wrapped up. Uh, look, that's it. Uh, hopefully I'll see something a lot more interesting and we'll talk about it soon. Um, if you like what I'm doing, hit like, subscribe. I put that stuff definitely weekly and right now in the lead up to Oscars, a lot more films. And uh, I'm on Twitter at Guru Eden. So I'll talk to you then. Bye.